132 years ago, on this day, in the United States, the Federation of Organized Trades and Labor Unions decided to organize a strike for better pay, better working conditions and an 8 hours workday. In Chicago, the steel workers were already on strike for months. Then, on May 3rd, a factory decided to hire scabs to substitute the organized workers. Anarchists like August Fies joined the protest against the scabs, but the police showed up to protect those scabs and even killed two of the workers on strike. Spies then wrote a manifesto against the police brutality for the next day protest. On May 4th, in the A Market Square, Samuel Fielden gives a speech in support of the steel workers and against wage slavery. After the speech, the police started to disperse the crowd and, on that moment, someone threw a bomb towards the police. After that, the police started to shoot in panic at the crowd and even killing other cops by accident. Because of the bombing, the unions were closed, hundreds of organizers were arrested and eight anarchists were charged with murder and conspiracy. Their names were Albert Parsons, Adolf Fischer, August Spies, George Engel, Louis Ling, Samuel Fielden, Michael Schwab and Oscar Neve. They were tried for a crime that they didn't commit. The bomber was not known and there was no evidence against them. Only two of them were at the scene and they were at the podium, visible to the crowd when the bombing occurred. On that day, murder was used to justify the ruling class interest in criminalizing anarchists. It was a political trial. Like the prosecutor said, anarchy is on trial. At the end of the trial, the verdict was guilty and the sentence was dead by hanging. Free asked for clemency by writing a letter to the governor and got life in prison instead. Parsons, Spies, Engel and Fisher were resolute. They didn't do any wrong and therefore they didn't appeal for clemency. Even though the governor was willing to stop the hanging, he didn't want to go against the industrial capitalists' will. Capitalists like Marshall Field refused such an option. He wanted the anarchists dead. The media, financed by people like Marshall Field, created a narrative around the idea that neither life nor their property would be safe until the anarchists, which they portrayed as vile creatures, were dead. The newspaper, St. Louis Globe, said, There are no good anarchists except dead anarchists. The Chicago Daily News stated, the anarchists are amenable to no other reason except that taught by the rifle and the club. A few months later, one day before the hanging, on November 10th, Louis Link killed himself with a dynamite cartridge after smoking a cigar. As an anarchist, he did not believe the state had the right to take his life. November 11th, known as the Black Friday, with their heads hooded with ropes around their necks, Parsons, Spies, Engel and Fisher were hanged for a crime that they didn't commit. Before dying, Spies said, the time will come when our silence will be more powerful than the voices you strangle today. Even though the state convicted them to a crime that they didn't commit, they preferred to die than beg for their lives. Such was the spirit of anarchism then. That's why we should protest on May 1st, without ignoring its past. The 1st of May shouldn't be celebrated along with our masters or puppet politicians that have nothing to do with this day. On this day, we shouldn't forget our fallen comrades. Instead, we should remember them by spreading our ideal, the abolition of, of authority and private property and instigate the spirit and practice of free and voluntary cooperation in the workers. Like Fisher and Engel shouted before dying, Hurrah for anarchy! Shall we still be slaves and work for wages? It is outrageous, has been for ages.